So it's time to do this channel's third Q&A. We hit 25,000 subscribers. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is amazing. I am honestly astonished I've made it this far. I would have gone outside like I've done with other Q&As, but the weather today is a bit appalling and I don't know when I'm next going to get the chance to really film one of these for over a week. So I'm going to have to do it in a rather echoey room. Sorry about that. I haven't really had a chance to sort of de-echo this uh, setup at the moment, but uh, it'll have to do. Anyway, let's get into the questions. So I'm first going to begin with questions that I either got asked quite a lot or questions that I've had in previous Q&As. So to begin with, which was probably the most asked question I got, was what is your favourite station and least favourite station you've been to? And, well, as for my favourite station, it does keep changing with time, so instead what I'm going to do is give a sort of list of honourable mentions. So, firstly, there's James Street, which has got its, you know, I like underground stations quite a lot. Um, it's also got its disused, well, disused-ish platform with the, the cool decorations on it, and I just think it's quite a cool station. I like it. Another one, on a sort of similar note, is Argyle Street in Glasgow, with, again, it's an underground station, I just sort of like them. Um, but also it's got its sort of still, it's still retained its 70s look. Um, I don't know how much longer it'll have that for, but for now we can enjoy that. Um, there's also, on the topic of non-underground stations, there's also Nethertown in Cumbria, which I went to recently, where you can walk on the disused platform, but also... Just the station's in a great location, it's right next to the coast and everything, and it was just very scenic and a nice place to be. Another honourable mention would be St Pancras, because it's just huge, grand building, but also you've got like three different levels to it. You've got the Eurostar, the Thameslink low level, and then of course the tube with it. And yeah, I just... There's a lot of stations that I really like for a lot of different reasons, so there's a bunch of different categories as to why, but I'd say of those four, they're probably some of my favourites. Now, as for my least favourite station, I can a lot more definitively answer that. For now, that has to be Grimsby Docks. It's just in a not very nice area. The platform is run down... Well, I mean, everywhere around Grimsby Docks is run down. Just the platform is covered in litter and just discarded items. There's a lot of fly tipping around there. Some needles I found in the station waiting shelter. And it's just... I did not feel safe there. It was very strange. I didn't film a video there. I was just out there for fun, taking stations off on that line. But yeah, it was not, not a good place to be. A close second would be South Bank near Middlesbrough. Again, in a very not nice area of town. Um, I, again, didn't film that either. But I also had the added bonus of going there at night. So, yeah. I mean, there'll be pictures on screen, probably. It was a very eerie atmosphere. <laughs> Would not recommend. <laughs> so, secondly, my favourite and least favourite trains. Um, again, favourites I can't really pinpoint too much. For a variety of reasons, you've got like the 507s, which, you know, you know I, I, I find them quite nostalgic. Um, they make cool sounds and everything. Peps are cool. I like peps. Um, other ones being potentially the 395s, the Javelins with Southeastern. Um, the only sort of domestic trains on a high-speed line. Um, you know, they zoom down. They're quite comfortable. They've got nice atmosphere in them. I quite like them. Also, the 444s as well. They're just... Overall good. I don't know. They're not like, I wouldn't say they particularly excel everywhere, but they're just all around quite good and nice. And I don't really have much to complain about with 444s. And as for my least favourite train, well, I mean, f to, to, to keep with the channel's meme, I suppose, um, 150s, but I, I definitely do over exaggerate it a bit, um, just for the sort of comedy factor. Um, but so I, if I had to list a favourite one, I'd say that, but you know. They're, they're good workhorses, they're reliable, and they've done a good job in their time. So next frequently asked question is why did you start YouTube? Um, I've covered this previously in other Q&As and videos. Um, I think it was in My Favourite Part of the Tube. I sort of gave a bit of a backstory about me liking trains in that video. And yeah, I've explained in previous Q&As. But to give you a very abridged version, essentially, 
I was born in Barnet next to a railway line. Apparently when I was a baby I liked looking, or like a toddler, I liked looking at the trains outside. Um, and I sort of just had a nice affinity for trains throughout my entire childhood. I got a model train set for my 18th birthday. I was like, huh, trains, cool. I decided to go out to Mersey Rail for the day, just, you know, for ride trains for fun. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And so, yeah, I kept thinking, oh, this is fun. I realize I've kind of gone on a tangent as to what actually made me like trains. Um, but as for starting YouTube, it was mainly because, well, firstly, I had to like the trains. That's how that happened. And then secondly, it was, I'd seen other channels, I think it was, as I said before, I think it was Jeff, Jen, and G Loves Trains. I'm pretty sure they were the main three that I watched before I started YouTube. Um, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And so at the time, I'd recently discovered Jeff's Secrets Of series, you know, the Secrets of the Tube. And, because I'd been going on Mersey Rail a bunch, I was like, oh, he's not done Secrets of Mersey Rail. I reckon, you know what? My A-levels are about to finish. I'll have three months of free time. Why don't I go ahead and give that a shot? Why don't I just try and make it one, just, just for fun? Why not? And then I also decided on top of that, you know, to actually find things to talk about, you know, secrets to talk about, why don't I just go around the entire Mersey Rail network? And I was like, oh hey, going around the entire Mersey Rail network in a single day, that can be cool content as well. And so that was how my first video on the channel was born, by me filming that. I'd never vlogged in my life when I made that video, so that was a complete gamble. Definitely uh, hasn't aged very well, that video, but I, th I think it's, it, it's still, it, it's nice. I, I don't delete them because, you know, it's, it's nice to see how I've evolved. But yeah, so I filmed that. I then got to filming Secrets of Mersey Rail. And then I put that out. I was really proud of it at the time, absolutely. And then, yeah, I just thought, you know, I've got time. I've got three months. I'll just come up with more video ideas. And so I wrote them all down. I had, funnily enough, my granddad was able to fund my videos because, you know, I wasn't monetized at the time. I did like random odd jobs uh, for my granddad who, due to his own physical health, can't really do many jobs around the house anymore. And so he paid me money to go and do some odd jobs for him throughout the day. And that's how I funded my early videos. So I went and did that, filmed my old videos, and I actually ended up doing quite well. I got around a thousand subscribers by the time I was going to university at the end of that summer. And so I just kept doing it. And here we are. I'm still doing YouTube now. So next up is what editing software do you use? I use Adobe Premiere Pro now. I have the Adobe Creative Cloud. I use Adobe Premiere Pro for the base editing. I use After Effects for, you know, the animated maps you'll see in my videos. Um, and I use Photoshop mainly for thumbnails, but I, I use a mixture of Photoshop and a software called Paint.net to make my thumbnails, because I'm procrastinating learning how to properly use Photoshop. <laughs> so here we are. Next up is what camera and microphone do you use? The camera I have is the Sony ZV-1 that's filming this right now. It's a pretty decent baseline vlogging camera, I think. It's quite basic in terms of what it can do, but you know, you can't put any extra lenses on it or whatever. Um, but I, it's got the job done for the last two years I've owned it. As for microphone, the um, Rode Wireless Go 2. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty good mic. I, I mean, you can, I've got a second one here. You can hook up two of them to the same receiver. And yeah, I use it for mainly when it's me and another person are filming, usually net. She'll take one of the mics and then, uh, yeah, it'll, uh, it's quite easy to just, you can, they record as different tracks and then you can separate them out in editing and it makes it quite convenient, so that's quite nice. Okay, so now that those questions are out of the way, let's get into some of the new questions we've been asked for this Q&A in particular. I've got them all in front of me on a Word document, so let's begin with reading some of them off. So firstly, how did you and Nat meet? So, um, well, if she were here to explain, I probably she could do a much better job at it, but essentially she was... She liked trains, but none of her friends really did. So went around on like Twitter and whatever, trying to find train people, following them and whatever. Um, found my page and then found on my Patreon that I was about to open a Discord server. And so joined my Patreon to be able to talk to me essentially. And um, yeah, 
She ended up joining, and then we ended up, um, I mean, I'm massively abridging the story here, but we ended up, like, talking on Discord or whatever. We decided to meet up, and yeah, um, it turned out we actually quite liked each other in the end. So, yeah, we ended up in a relationship, and now the rest is history. Here we are. And I still have people in my comments section every day thinking we're siblings. Oh, God. Have you ever considered volunteering on a heritage railway? I don't think I ever will. I mean, it could be cool, but as of right now, I probably won't. But you never know what could happen, eh? What is your favorite video that you have made? That is a good question. Um, I think in terms of, like, final product of the video, I'd say probably the pointless journey I did from the two reddish stations. For some reason, I just really liked how the final video turned out. Like, the vibes in it are just great. Like, it's just, it's, I, I cannot explain it, but it just turned out brilliantly. Yeah, <laughs> that's the best I can put it. As for most fun video to film, I'd probably say any of, like, the station openings. Um, they're always great, you know, lots of real nerds gathering together, and everyone's just having a good time. And yeah, I'm, I really enjoy myself going to the station openings. What job do you want to do when you've finished university? That's a good question as well. Um, well, I mean, if I were to actually follow my degree, I'd end up in some chemistry job, but, you know, I, I don't think that's happening. Ideally, it's doing this, you know, making the videos. It's just making sure that that's self-sufficient in a year's time. <laughs> if not, I'll have to get some sort of side job. In all honesty, I haven't actually decided yet what job it would be. Um, hoping that, I'm hoping I could find a way to make this sufficient, but if not, I'll have to come up with a contingency plan at some point. What was the first 507 you ever went on in your life? I don't remember, I was like three. <laughs> um, pff, I have no idea. Um, as for first 507, I've documented myself going on though, that would be 507016, because that's in the, the shot of, uh, you know, the, well, it's in the opening shot of my first video. What tips do you have to grow in popularity? That's a good question. I did a poll recently of like what people liked about this channel the most, and it was mainly personality and uniqueness of content that won. So in all honesty, I'd say just try and make engaging content. Engaging and bring something new. I like to think that I was able to sort of bring some new stuff to the table with things like pointless journeys that I've done. Um, as in sort of like innovative way to sort of expand on the sort of British train vlogging genre. Being consistent to, I mean obviously don't burn yourself out, but you know, just keep making videos, keep trying to improve on it, and eventually you'll just kind of find the success. From what I've seen, um, obviously, you know, there is a little bit of luck factor in it, but you can try and increase your chances the most you can by, you know, being consistent, trying to innovate. So good luck to any of you who hope to do that in the future as well. Do you like planes and do you like traveling on them? Uh, yes, honestly, I do enjoy flying. Um, I just don't do it very often. Obviously, flying in a plane is great. I can't really identify planes or anything like, oh, that's a, a, a Boeing 717. Like, I don't know what they're meant to look like. I mean, I know what an Airbus looks like, I think, but I couldn't tell between like the 319, 320, whatever. I don't know how they work. But I do really enjoy flying on planes. Like, this, the, the experience of being at an airport and boarding a plane and getting on, I don't know. I just really love it for some reason. And also, you know, being really high up and seeing for just absolutely miles and miles, being, you know, several thousand feet in the air, it's just like, wow. It's, it's such a cool experience. I do like planes a lot. What is your opinion on steam engines? Honestly, I'm... I know, I know, I know steam engines have got a really, really huge fan base, and I can understand why, because, you know, they're really old, heritage, just iconic trains, you know. Anyone can see a steam train going by, and you'll see them, you know, snapping pictures of it. Just any old members of the public will see a steam train and be like, ooh, nice, get a photograph. And they're very appealing, I can see why. For me though, I mean, they're, they're nice to ride on every now and again, but I don't really go out of my way to find steam trains. I'm more interested in, like, modern trains. You know, trains that I can go out at any time and just ride. I don't know why exactly, but I, I'm just far more interested in modern trains as opposed to old ones. So essentially, I can see why they have an appeal, but 
personally, I don't think I'm, I'm like properly into them necessarily. Would you like to do some unofficial tube challenges one day in the future or possibly break the record? Well, um, the tube challenge, you know, I think there was recently a new record set that was like 18, 19 hours. And you might recall from a video I did last year when I did the um, snake challenge with Amari, that took seven hours and that broke me. Like seven hours of that was already so just draining. And the thought of doing that for almost three times as long, that just... Oh, I'd, I'd need to have a damn good reason to do it. I would not just do it off the cuff. If it was maybe like a charity fundraiser or... Well, well that, that's an example. I can't think of any other examples. But it would have to be a very, very good reason. I can't see myself doing it any time in the near future. But... Yeah, it sounds cool. But... Oof. Not, not for a good while. Are you going to be on the 507 rail tour? Unfortunately, no, um, because that's the day I have to move back to university on the 15th of September. Yay! So I can't, I can't make it, unfortunately. I mean, I'd have loved to have gone, but I'm sorry. I'm sure there's going to be, um, as, as, at least as far as I'm aware, there's going to be a second one at some point. If I'm available for that, then maybe? We'll see. Um, it, re it really depends on when it is. I mean, I'd like to go to one of them. Would be nice to say goodbye to the 507s and ride them for the last time, for the fourth time. <laughs> I don't know at this point. Every time it's the last time, it ends up not being the last time. It's a bit dumb. What's the worst blooper you had whilst making a video? Ooh, I, um, I really wish I still had the original clip for it. I think I accidentally deleted it ages ago when I was just doing like a file declutter. But when I was filming the, what's it called? The video when I was talking about the disused railway line that goes from Warrington to Altrincham. Um, when I was filming outside of the Go Outdoors for Warrington Art Police Station, I had some guy in a car drive by me, like shouting at me, saying, hey, police officer, what are you doing? Because he thought I was a police officer because I had my camera and my mic for some reason. And I was just like, I was just so like caught out by it. I'm like, I'm, I'm not police, mate. All right, okay, bye. He was, he was a proper like bloke as well. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> that was kind of scary. But he drove off and then I finished filming that. It was, um, yeah, I really wish I had the, the video to show you, but oh my God, that was a hell of a time. If you could bring back any sort of train class, what would it be? I'd say maybe the 442, I'll give, I'll, give I'll give a few. The 442s to begin with, which probably would still be in service right now had COVID not happened. I mean, they seem quite, quite cool trains. Um, they they seem like just like multiple unit versions of Mark 3s, but I'm just sort of sad that I never got to ride them on the Southwestern Railway Network. Cause you know, I got properly into like riding trains in 2022, but of course they got taken out in 2020. Um, the second one would be the 313s, but specifically on the Northern City line. I'm so sad I never got to experience 313s on the Northern City Line. It would have been a perfect time capsule to like the 80s or whatever. That would have been so fun to do. And now I only get 717s, but yeah, 313s on the Northern City Line. I'm so sad I never got to experience that. And another one being 483s on the Island Line. Um, spoiler, upcoming. Um, yeah, so 483s on the Island Line. That would, um, like running 38 stock trains on a proper national, that's just so cool. And I never got to experience that. Would you ever consider coming to Ireland? Yes, I do want to go to Ireland at some point. I've still never been. And I do have plans to get to Ireland at some point. It's not in the near, near future. Um, and they're still very much in the early planning stages, but I really do want to go to Ireland at some point and ride some of the Irish trains. That would be a very fun time. If you had the opportunity to ride on only one train for the rest of your life, what train would it be? We'll assume it's a train that can, you know, magically run everywhere regardless of electrification and on or whatever. Again, I'd probably say 444s. They're just quite comfy just to ride on. They're just nice, they're quite smooth. And yeah, they just work. They just work, they're great. 444s. How many stations have you been to? One second, let me check. As of this video, I have visited 966 stations. As of this video being filmed, it might be a couple more when that's out, but yeah. I'm almost at a thousand now. I've been going up quite a lot because I've been in London quite a few days from moving down south briefly. I'm going back up north in a couple days though, so 
got another year to wait until I'm down here permanently. Ah. Will you continue going to station openings in Britain? I mean, I said they're some of my favourite videos to film, so yeah, absolutely. I'd love to go and do some more station openings. It's always just a matter of availability, like if I'm free at the time. Are you ever going to do train spotting videos? Probably not, because for me, I'm a rail enthusiast, but I'm not a train spotter. I don't just sit at a station or at a bridge or whatever and just spot trains. I actually get bored quite quickly doing that. Um, I like to be out and about and moving around and actually getting on the trains and riding them. I like going around on them, not just spotting them. I'll, you know, if, if there just happens to be a cool train going by at a certain time, then sure, I'll be like, you know, I'll sit there, try and find it. But I don't, I'm, I'm not a train spotter, if that makes sense. Real enthusiast, sure, but I'm much more of a train rider rather than a spotter. Do you ever want to visit another rail network outside of Britain? Apart from the Paris Metro. Yes, well, I mean, obviously I've been to the Paris Metro in another video. Um, but, yeah, there's plenty I'd like to go to. Like, that loads of cities have got pretty extensive metro systems. And I just want to ride it. It's just mainly because, you know, having to get out to foreign countries, it just takes time, money, and, yeah, it's hard to organise quickly. Um, so, a, a lot of forward planning is required. I'm probably going to have to wait until I'm done with university to get all that done. Um, but there's still, it's, it's, it's obviously something I want to do. And yeah, there, there's plenty I want to visit outside of Britain. But we'll get around to that at some point. Do you plan on playing transport games on camera? I'm assuming that means like for a video. Um, fun fact, I nearly did make a Train Simworld 2 video, I think, like a year and a half ago. Um, and the only reason it didn't come out was because I accidentally deleted all of my face cam footage. So I was like, eh, whatever. And never uploaded it. Um, it's, it's, it's not a priority for a video type I would make, but I mean, sure, I, it's, it's on the table. I don't know when I'll do it, but I, if I can think of a good enough reason to make a video on, say, like, Train Sim, then sure. I, 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 it, 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 it's an option. Cats or dogs? Ah, yes. Cats, definitely. And unfortunately, not in the sense of, you know, I like them both, but I prefer cats a bit more. No, uh, I'm probably about to lose subscribers over this. Um, no, I hate dogs. I have hated dogs pretty much all of my life. The main thing with me and dogs is the barking. Like, it just terrifies the life out of me, and... I just, I, I get really, like, nervous around dogs, like, phobia levels, probably. Um, and I just, yeah, I hate going to people's houses who have dogs because then I'm just, like, awkwardly covering my ears and I just look like a lunatic. <laughs> and, yeah. I also just hate dogs that, like, jump up at you and lick you. It's just, it's so horrible and... Yeah, dogs have caused me so much misery in my life that I just, I can't. I'm, I'm sorry, I do not like dogs. Cats are just, they're just quiet, much lower maintenance, and yeah, much more up to my speed. I'm very sorry. Will you ever go to Welling Garden City? I'm visiting every station in the country, so yes, eventually. Will you ever go to Ipswich? I'm visiting every station in the country, so yeah, eventually. Will you ever come to Devon? I'm visiting every station in the country, so yeah, eventually. Will you explore more of South Wales? I'm visiting every station in the country, so yeah, it... Y you get the point. <laughs> yes. I'm hoping to visit every station in the country eventually, so if there's a place you want me to go to, I will inevitably end up there at some point, or I have been there before. Yeah. So that was the 25,000 subscribers Q&A. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for 25,000 subscribers. This is amazing. I honestly can't believe I actually made it this far. It's great. <laughs> um, thank you all for subscribing, watching the videos. I hope we can get even more from now. <sighs> yeah. The q are fun. Thank you for everyone who submitted questions. I had over like 200, so it's been hard to sort through them all, but yeah. Thank you to everyone who subscribed and watched. See you at the next Subscribe on Milestone and the next Q&A. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.